Every new trip that I take to the Walt Disney World Resort in Florida is different. From the different experiences that I have in the parks to where I stay on my resort and the things that I test out. This video is for the over planner, for the person that loves to go into all the little details about putting the perfect trip together. In this video, I will be going over the following categories, the resort, the weather, the new things that I tested out, being in the parks and transportation. Before we get started, and just in case you're interested, I will save my Instagram stories in the description box below so that you can see in real time all the things that I was feeling, experiencing, testing out, and that kind of thing as well. Ready? Let's go! On this trip, I did something for the first time, and that was a split stay. So I split up my 12-day vacation into two different sections. First resort that I stayed at was the Disney's All-Star Music Resort. And then the second resort that I stayed at was Disney's Caribbean Beach Resort. Disney's All-Star Music Resort did exactly what I needed it to and basically just give me a place to sleep. Other than that, I really did not spend too much time at the resort on this half of the stay. Uh, just because I knew I was going to be in the parks uh, quite a bit, covering a few things that I needed to cover and that kind of thing. Um, I will say out of the three Disney All-Star Resorts, this is number three on my list. Now, only because I think of the theming. Um, do I love music? Yes, I do. Am I engulfed in it? And do I know a whole lot about it? No. So I think that's why I didn't appreciate it maybe as much as somebody else who really is into music. Uh, that's basically just the feel of the resort for me just wasn't what I was looking for and I really wanted it to be because I really thought that I was going to enjoy this resort. And it was nothing that cast members did or anything like that. It was literally just the feeling and the vibe of the resort that I just did not mesh with. And I am very, very big on how a place feels. I think that that adds to the vacation a thousand percent. Sometimes when staying at a Disney value resort, you will experience being there with large groups. And this happened to be my experience on this trip. I was there and in the same section as two other large groups. So later in the night, it did start to get a little bit on the louder side as they were coming back from the parks. So I did feel bad for families that had little ones that were trying to get them settled and go to sleep because the group that was coming through, like I said, was quite loud. And as they were coming through, sometimes they would knock on the doors whenever they were walking through the different um, hallways and corridors and things like that. So just, just something to be aware of whenever you are thinking about staying at a value resort. It was nice, it was calming, it was clean, and again, it was exactly what I needed for that portion of my visit. I did do online check-in 10 days prior to my arrival date, but I also had a very early arrival day. I knew that I was going to get to the resort, drop off my bags, and then head to Disney Springs and then just wait for my room to be ready and get that notification. When I arrived and when I went to Bell Services and they asked me if I had already checked in, I let them know that I did online check-in. So they told me, just go ahead and go to the front desk and see if they can get you into a room right now. Now, since I wasn't being very specific on where I wanted to stay, I just wanted to see where they were going to place me at this resort and just kind of experience it, not knowing any Thing going in um, I went ahead and went up to the front desk and they were able to get me into a room pretty quickly so uh, once I checked in I got my room and at that moment I also got a keys to the world card I always like having a keys to the world card on hand as a backup just in case, just in case I lose my magic band, just in case my phone decides not to work at a certain time, I always have that physical thing to be able to use while I'm in the parks. Second resort that I stayed at was Disney's Caribbean Beach Resort. Now, how I transferred from one resort to the next is on my checkout day from Disney's All-Star Music Resort, all I did was go to Bell Services, let them know that I was transferring to another resort. So I let them know um, what resort I was going to and of course my name and they handled the bag transfer for me. Um, I did not get my bags until after 3 p.m. So if you plan on having this kind of a vacation, make sure that you are um, keeping the things with you that you may need uh, prior to that 3 or 4 p.m. mark as your bags are being transferred from one resort to the next. 
On my resort transfer day, it was also a rest day for me. So I did need to map out how I was gonna get myself from resort A to resort B. The most efficient way that I found with this was I took a Disney bus from All Star Music to Disney's Hollywood Studios. The bus station was very near the Skyliner station. I hopped on the Skyliner and then made my way to Disney's Caribbean Beach Resort. And the whole process took roughly about 20, 25 minutes. So it was a really easy, seamless process um, to get from resort A to resort B. Now you may be in a park on your, on your transfer day, and may not need to know all of those little itty bitty details, but just in case. With Disney's Caribbean Beach Resort, you do need to do a little bit of research and figure out what is most important to you because this resort is so spread out. Knowing what is important to you will help you be able to figure out what area and what building you want to stay in. Um, another thing that I really was paying attention to was how was the room? I have heard many complaints that people feel like the rooms themselves were really dark and almost felt the dungeony. With my Disney's Caribbean Beach Resort review coming up, I will go into all of the different sections and what is close to that and explain the things that you can expect in the different sections. Uh, but I knew that the Skyliner was my main priority. So I picked a section and a building that was closest to a Skyliner station. As far as the room went and how it felt, I actually enjoyed it very much. I can see where guests do say that it is kind of on the darker side and I don't want to say dungeony because that just makes you think of dirty and, and that because it's, it's not that. It's just on the darker side because of all the foliage that is around and how the rooms are placed in the buildings. Uh, now I kind of enjoyed this. So coming back from a very hot day, I happened to be there during a heat wave, of course. Um, so coming back in the middle of the day and being able to go back to my room and just take a, a quick nap or a quick rest, have, being in on a darker sort of room really helped me. It helped me calm down and kind of reset and then get back out there in the sun and the heat. I also had a room that was on the corner of a building. So that meant that I had two windows. And for me, that let in enough light because I am somebody that needs to be out in the open and be outside. That is something that, that draws to me. So I felt that having a corner room, having the two windows was just enough sunlight and the warmth that I wanted and needed for this type of vacation stay. On this trip, I did use Mears Connect as my transportation to get myself to and from the airport. Now, because I was doing a split say, I did have to book two separate one-way trips because I was at two separate resorts. So just be prepared for that if you plan on using a shuttle service. So I had to book a one-way trip from the airport to Disney's All-Star Music, and then I had to book a separate one-way trip from Disney's Caribbean Beach Resort back to the airport. For my stay at Disney's All-Star Music Resort, the Disney buses is the main transportation to and from the parks. Now, I did experience where this resort had one single bus the entire time. Even if I came back in the middle of the day, I still had a Disney's All-Star Music specific bus. Some trips I have experienced where you will have to um, take multiple stops at the different Disney's All-Star Resorts. But for the most part, first thing in the morning and then all the way at the end of the night, those are the two times of the day that you're going to have a Disney's All-Star Music specific bus. With Disney's Caribbean Beach Resort, I had the Disney Skyliner to Epcot and Hollywood Studios, and then the Disney bus to Magic Kingdom and Animal Kingdom. As far as the Disney Skyliner station is concerned, that opened up at 7 a.m. on the dot, um, each morning. So that was incredible. What was even more incredible is at the Disney's Caribbean Beach station, there's a Joffy's coffee station right there. So I was able to get that before I got on the Skyliner and have my coffee in hand riding to a park. On one of my park days, it was July 4th and I was in Epcot and getting on the Skyliner to get back to my resort. Now, I stayed in Epcot a good probably 30 to 45 minutes after the park officially closed that night and the Skyliner line was insane. It had wrapped back and forth plus over the bridge heading to Disney's Yacht and Beach Club. 
So just be aware, especially on really, really busy park days, that whenever you're coming out of Epcot and Hollywood Studios, that the Skyliner line can look very long. Now, I did an experimentation and I just sat there. I wanted to see how long it took for the line to go down for you to just be able to walk up the ramp and get up there. And it took about an hour and a half. So I sat there for an hour and a half and just watched everybody and how the line progressed. Uh, but the line progressed very quickly. So when you come out and you see that there's another line to get on transportation for the Skyliner, know that it will go quickly. Weather for this trip was as expected for a June-July vacation. Hot. Uh, I was there during a heat wave and then also rain. Uh, the rain showers that happened were just the normal pop-up rain showers that would come up, you know, 10, 15 minutes, they'd be gone. And then those afternoon thunderstorms that would last maybe 30, 45 minutes to an hour, and then they would move through. For the heat specifically, I knew that I needed to dress light. And I have learned over past trips of exactly how I like to dress. My preferred way to dress during the heat is a dress. I was in love with the black dress that I wore on this trip and I actually ended up wearing it like three different times not for full days but I would come back to the resort take a rest and then like on different days I would just kind of intermix it in and it was just so light so airy and it just kept me cool now all of the other outfits that I did wear uh, the materials that I tested out I liked very much and linen was one of those um, I did go and try out linen pants and actually those worked and were breathable enough that they did not make me feel hot and stuffy so I was pleased with the way that linen pants did in the parks on a park day all the other days were shorts and all the shorts that I picked actually worked very well for the trip it's also getting to the point to where I will just throw in one or two hats in my suitcase just in case I have a hat hair day and I need to put on a hat but the hats are actually now becoming my new Mickey ears. It's getting to the point to where I would much rather have a hat on my head because it keeps the sun out of my face, it keeps the headache away, and it just helps tremendously make me feel better. Um, I did also, for the first time, try putting my ears on over my hat, and I actually like that quite a bit. Number one, the hat took the brunt of the pressure from the Disney Park ears that I usually feel, which is why you don't normally see me with ears on my head for an entire day because they hurt behind my head. But having the hat on, I was able to have the ears on my head for the entire day. Also something else that I am, uh, this is a personal thing for me that I am figuring out is, you know, whenever I'm home and I'm putting together outfits, there's, uh, I'm inside, I'm in the AC, it's straight, it looks cute, it looks good, but then the reality of getting to the parks is it's hot and it's either gonna go up or I need to, to, to fix it a different way or have a hat on. So now it's getting to the point to where I am putting my outfits together that I'm being realistic about what my hair is gonna look like. Um, and because I'm also thinking about taking pictures and being on social media as well, but also on the practical end of having hair up and being cool for the entire day. So I am being very, a lot more strategic about what my hair is really gonna look like with the outfits that I put together. I did test out two different kinds of shoes, if you will, on this trip. So first up were the kind of sandals that I wanted to be able to wear in the parks and then also uh, a New Balance tennis shoe. So I did bring two different kind of sandals. I did invest in a pair of Chacos, which whenever you go online and you research out the best Disney sandal, uh, Tevas and Chacos are the two sandals that pop up the most. Um, and with the Chacos, they are rugged enough and they can also handle if any rain comes through because they dry out quickly, stay on your feet and won't slide and all of that. However, I did find with the Chacos, and this is just a personal thing with just with my feet in particular, they were a little too hard. They didn't give enough give for me. And um, so that, that was a problem for me just because of the kind of feet that I have. The second pair of sandals that I had had a lot of cushion on them. And the days that I wore those sandals, I had no issues whatsoever because I had enough give in the sandal, enough softness in the sandal, if you will. Um, and so those quickly became my favorite kind of shoe for this trip. 
Uh, the tennis shoes that I wore actually did very well on the trip. They had enough cushion in them. They let my feet breathe and, and spread out as well. I don't like for my feet to be too constricted in a shoe where it's so tight. Um, and those two types of shoes did very well. Uh, it also helped my feet to have different shoes and different feels um, for that 10 day span in the parks. Something else that I did to be able to help my body and my feet survive 10 long days in the parks was a daily routine that I knew that I was going to try out and it worked wonders this time. So first up was using a spray before I went into the parks and it's called a still standing spray. I was able to spray this on both sides of my feet, the top and the bottom. And what this does is it helps with uh, inflammation and it helps with swelling and it also helps with pain and just makes your feet feel light and airy throughout the entire day. I only needed to reapply this on one day and that was because I was in the park for about 13 hours that day. That was the only day that I really needed to have a re-up uh, to be able to last out the entire day. The second step in there was having a bath soak. Every single night, I would make sure that I would soak in an Epsom salt soak, and it was specifically for relaxing muscles, uh, for str strenuous workouts, if you will. And I made sure that I soaked for at least 20 minutes a night. Step three is I would use a muscle rub in my shins and in my calves and then of course on my heel which is where I have the most problem whenever I am in walking so much in the parks and then the muscles on the top of my feet. Having this done every night was literally like a reset for my legs for the next day. It was it was really a game changer. And then also socks. Having tight fitting or compression socks on my feet and then on my legs, whether it was, uh, I could tell if I needed to have the compression socks on me in the park or if I just needed to go back, have them put on and have a little rest time. And then of course at night, I would also do the same thing to keep the swelling down as well. And that routine worked wonders and I was able to still walk by the end of the 10 days in the parks. My main focus with this trip and being in the parks was paying attention to crowd levels right before the holiday, during the 4th of July holiday, and then right after. So that was my main objective with this specific trip. I did notice that crowds did become arriving about July 2nd, and then when it came to being in the parks. So Magic Kingdom does have 4th of July fireworks on the 3rd and the 4th. Epcot only has 4th of July fireworks on the 4th. Being in the two parks are two totally different experiences. Totally different experiences. In Magic Kingdom, all of the 4th of July feels, if you will, will start where I, right before the fireworks begin with the fireworks themselves and then at uh, through the end of the night until the park closed because it did have DJ booths in three different locations in Magic Kingdom, which was like by far the most magical night ever, ever. Being able to dance in front of a DJ booth in front of the castle in the hub, chef's kiss. It was perfect. When it came to being in Epcot for the 4th of July, everything that happens there is during the day. And it's very, it's uh, like midday is when all of the stuff. So you can meet the rare characters. Chip and Dale were out. Mickey, Goofy, Pluto were out. Um, being able to see the Voices of Liberty perform in the American Pavilion was also just incredible. Just having those little itty bitty new experiences like that with rare characters is something that I love to experience and it was just something new even though the actual experience may have been slightly short. Now you could tell that the parks really started to gain people starting at that five o'clock mark on. So about five o'clock is when people started kind of coming into the parks and really filling it in, getting in there. And what I did love is that everybody was in their 4th of July stuff, especially when they were coming into Magic Kingdom. It was, it kind of felt like what it feels like when there's a holiday party. You know, you have your day guests and then when that four o'clock time hits, you start having your party guests in and they're either in, you know, holiday costumes or in their holiday get up for Christmas or things like that. It kind of felt the same. So everybody was in their um, had like I had eye stuff on me, um, the, the the clothes that they wore, just all of the flair that they had on them was really cool. And I, I am somebody that likes that kind of stuff. But the later in the day it got, 
the more crowded it got. Now, and as far as getting your spot for seeing the fireworks, I would say at least an hour to an hour and a half before the fireworks begin on the day of your visit. I did use Disney Genie Plus on this particular visit and I only used it twice. I used it in Hollywood Studios and I also used it on July 3rd in Magic Kingdom as well. And the crowds weren't so huge during the day that it really made a huge difference like it would at different times of the year. So I was able like in Magic Kingdom to get everything done that I wanted to and using Genie Plus on by 6 p.m. It was it was awesome. Same thing with Hollywood Studios. Sometimes in Hollywood Studios you have it to where the crowds are so heavy that when you get lightning lanes that your lightning lanes are all stacked for the afternoon because that's how it kind of lines up. But I was able to use it um, throughout the day and, and ride, ride throughout the day. So uh, just kind of depends in Hollywood studios on what the crowds are like, but um, I did have an enjoy enjoyable experience and get to ride everything that I wanted to with Genie Plus. Um, I did come up with a snag on Genie Plus in my Hollywood studios day. So for some reason, my phone would not load. It would not load anything. So whenever I would go in there and try and get a lightning lane, it would give me basically an error mode. So what I had to do is I needed to go find a guest experience team tent and talk to a cast member there. Let them know that I wanted to book a Genie Plus Lightning Lane until I could get my phone to cooperate. Um, at the time, it was just service was bad and th things just weren't working properly with service, you know, because technology is, is not always perfect. So I ended up having to do that twice. Go to a guest experience team tent and talk with a cast member to get two Lightning Lanes scheduled for me for that day. I did end up getting in line for something and I just decided that I was going to sign out of my account and then sign all the way back in. When I did that, it fixed the issue. So I did not have an issue after that. So just in case you run into that problem where all of a sudden, for some reason, nothing is loading in your phone when it comes to the Genie Plus service, um, log all the way out and then log all the way back in first before making your trek to find a guest, a guest team experience tent. Something else that happened to me and that kind of goes along with the reloading of my phone is I had a lightning lane for Rock and Roller Coaster. Rock and Roller Coaster went down for about two hours throughout the day and it was during my return time. So what I got was a guest experience selection. So it was basically like a free, a free Genie Plus lightning lane to any of the other Genie Plus uh, rides in the park. Well, I had it and luckily I was taking screenshots of everything to be able to make this video. And whenever I signed back out and I signed back in, I lost it. I lost that. So whenever I went to scan into Rock and Roller Coaster and use my redemption pass, it was showing that I did not have it. So having that screenshot of having that redemption pass, I was able to show the cast member, show the screenshot, show that it was on the day and all the information that they needed. And they let me use my redemption pass to be able to go ride it um, since I did have it scheduled. So it's always a good idea that whenever you have instances like this, that you take screenshots of everything. When you get a boarding group, take a screenshot that you got a boarding group. Um, whenever you get a redemption experience pass, take a picture of it just in case there are any technical difficulties. I also didn't realize until I got home and started putting together my my clips and then all of my notes that I had curated quite a few special experiences involving fireworks. So I'll go through those real quick. So first up, I experienced happily ever after in full on pouring rain full on pouring rain. Now, since uh, I was able to have this experience and somebody that's weird like me, I enjoyed every minute of it. But I was also able to kind of maneuver through different spots quickly in the park to see different perspectives of the fireworks. So that was really cool as well. And in my description box linked below, I do have my in the moment stories from the entire trip. And it is in Instagram vertical view um, while you, for YouTube. So just, just in case that might bother you, but I do have it saved down there. So you can see all the things that I experienced uh, in, in that real time. Um, second was watching fireworks or happily ever after fireworks from the Poly, the Polynesian it was incredible. I also got on one of the water taxis before happily ever after ended. And I was in the middle of the lagoon as the ending was happening. So 
that was another such a magical experience that I just never even knew that I needed to experience until I was on that boat heading back from the Pali to Magic Kingdom and having the fireworks just over me uh, in the lagoon. That was just everything. And then also coming back from Epcot one night on the Skyliner back to the resort, I watched Epcot's fireworks from the Skyliner from up high. That was incredible as well. And then from the Disney's Caribbean Beach Resort, you can actually see uh, Epcot's fireworks from right behind the old Port Royale uh, section right next to Sebastian's Bistro and by the pool. So there is a little deck right there overlooking the, the lagoon and it's overlooking the Skyliner and then the Disney's Riviera Resort and you can see the fireworks straight on. On my last night, I decided that I wanted to ha have kind of a relaxing night and not actually be in the park for fireworks. So that's what I did. I made it back to my resort in time to see fireworks from there and just ended on a nice, quiet, peaceful, personal note, which was the best experience ever. I also scored reservations at uh, the Mexico Pavilion at La Hacienda de San Angel and I got my reservation time close to firework time. So I was able to basically have dinner and a firework show, uh, yeah, overlooking the lagoon, which was also incredible as well. Well, I did have four different table service dining experiences this trip. Number one, I did eat at a character breakfast, which was Tusker House, which is like up here on my list. Number two, I ate at Sebastian's Bistro, which was the table service restaurant at my resort. And that was a very interesting and exotic uh, way of eating, which I appreciated very much. I also ate at, uh, in the Mexico Pavilion, La Hacienda de San Angel, and that food was amazing. That entire experience was amazing as well. Again, just another ambiance that I truly fit in with and loved very much. And then lastly, I ate at Rodeo Roundup Barbecue in Toy Story Land in Hollywood Studios. And boy, that was a lot of food, but it was awesome food. Each of those dining reviews will be up on the channel very soon for you to be able to take a look at. Um, I will say each dining experience served so much food. So if you are not a heavy, heavy eater, just be aware of that, especially with the family style dining. And the family style dining I was at was at Sebastian's Bistro, Rodeo Roundup Barbecue. Again, so much food that I just could not finish uh, being just one person by myself. Uh, I enjoyed every single dining experience and I do think that every single dining experience should be enjoyed at least once. This 12 day trip was a bucket list thing for me and I had the most magical vacation ever. I am now getting ready to get everything out on the channel for you. So make sure that you push that follow button and that notification bell so that you can get notified of all the videos coming out for all the reviews of everything that I experienced on this trip. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Terry with Creating the Magic and have a magical day.